guys, my name's Dave and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. In this lesson, I'm gonna teach you how to play And I Love Her by The Beatles, which is an absolute classic and it's got some really nice guitar parts to it. So I'll teach you all the rhythm guitar and I'll also teach you all the lead guitar parts as well. If you wanna master your chords, then be sure to head over to guitarzerotohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you wanna improve in your guitar in general, then sign up to Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. Let's jump into the lesson. Okay, so I'm gonna start by teaching you all the rhythm guitar parts. And rhythmically, it's quite easy. There's a very simple strumming pattern that gets used throughout the whole song, and it sounds like this. Down, 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 up, down, up. Or one and two and three and four and. And that just gets repeated over and over again. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. In terms of chords, there are a lot of bar chords. However, I will teach you a small hack you can use if you haven't quite mastered your bar chords yet. I'll show that to you later. So let's start off with the intro and it's really nice and simple. There's just two chords here. We start with an F sharp minor bar chord like this. Now I've looked at how Paul McCartney plays it and when he plays it live, he actually uses his thumb to play this F sharp minor. You could choose to do the full bar with your index finger or you could use your thumb. So ring and picky still remain on the fourth frets of the fifth and fourth strings, but your index finger will just bar across the third, second and first strings and your thumb will reach over the top to hit the second fret of the sixth string. So that's another way of doing the F sharp minor, or you can play like this. And then we just go to an E chord. So from the F sharp minor, it's easier to just slide your ring and pinky finger down to the second frets and use your middle finger on the first fret of the G string, like that. So two strumming patterns for each chord in the intro. So that's it for the intro, really, really easy. Now, if you are playing this by yourself and you wanna incorporate that lead guitar lick into that intro, then I'll show you how to do it. So we'll start off by playing the lick. So it's second fret of the fifth string, then second fret of the fourth string, first fret, and then fourth fret of the fifth string with your ring finger. So play that. And that starts on the end beat after the three. So one and two and three and four and so you hit that note on the one beat, then get your fingers into position for the F sharp minor, and then continue on with the strumming pattern, continuing on from the second down strum. So two, three, and four. And for the next bar, we continue with three strums on this F sharp minor. One, two, three. And then we play the riff again. But this time, instead of ending on the fourth fret of the fifth string, we just end on the second fret of the fifth string with our middle finger. So one, two, three, and four, and one. And then we get our fingers into our E major position and then continue on with the strumming pattern from the two beat. Two, three, and four, and. And then for the next bar, three strums. One, two, three. And then we play that first lick that we had in the intro. And four, and one. And that takes us to the verse. So a combined intro with the riff and chords sounds like this. One and two and three and four and Alright, so let's get into the verse, which is really nice and easy. There's three lines of chords here. We're starting with an F sharp minor, playing that for one strumming pattern, and then going up to the C sharp minor. So it's a fifth string bar chord from the fourth fret of the fifth string. Then back to F sharp minor, back up to C sharp minor. For the third line of chords, F sharp minor, C sharp minor. Then we go to an A major. And it's best to play your A major with your middle ring and pinky finger because then we'll go to a B7. So to go to a B7 from the A, just keep your ring finger where it is, move your middle finger up one string, index finger goes to the first fret of the fourth string and pinky finger on the second fret of the first string. So that's B7 and then E major for two strumming patterns. So the verse.
Now, one little tip here, if the bar chords are giving you a lot of trouble and you can't quite play bar chords yet, then just focus on hitting the power chord. And what a power chord is, is just the top two strings of these bar chords. And if you can get the third string in as well, the octave above the root, then that's good too. But that's a nice hack and it sounds just as good. That's just a small hack, but of course you should try to play that full bar chord. But if you are very new and bar chords are out of your reach, then just try it with a power chord for now. Next we get to the bridge, which is nice and easy. There's two lines of chords here. We go C sharp minor, B. So this is a B major. You can play it like this or like this. It's up to you. So middle ring and pinky finger on the fourth frets, or you could use your ring finger to bar across those same frets. And then we go back up to C sharp minor and then G sharp minor. So we just move this whole shape up one string and then lift your middle finger. Then back up to C sharp minor, G sharp minor, and then B for two strumming patterns. So the bridge. Next we get to the solo section. Now the solo section is the same as the verse, but we have a key change here. So every single chord gets shifted up one fret. So originally we had F sharp minor, but now that's G minor. And originally we had C sharp minor, but now that's shifted up to D minor. And the same goes with all the other chords. Now, instead of an A, we're playing a B flat. So that's a B flat bar chord like this, instead of the A. And then instead of a B7, we're doing a C7 chord. And then the last line of chords is an F. So again, it's identical to the verse chords that I taught you earlier, but everything gets shifted up one fret. And as a result, some of those chord shapes will change a little bit. So this is the solo section and also the fourth verse. And finally, we have the outro, which is G minor for two strumming patterns, and then F for two strumming patterns. Back up to G minor for two strumming patterns, and then we end with a D chord. So outro. And those are all the rhythm guitar parts, really nice and simple. Okay, so now I'm gonna teach you how to play all of George Harrison's lead guitar parts. And in the studio recording, this is playing on a classical nylon string guitar. But if you don't have one, then it sounds just as good on a steel string acoustic. Now the intro riff is just a four note lick. So it's second fret of the fifth string with your middle finger, second fret of the fourth string with your ring, then down to the first fret of the fourth string with your index, and then we end on the fourth fret of the fifth string with your ring finger. So four notes there. Now they're played at eighth notes and we start on the end beat after the three. And this four note lick is just repeated through three times in this intro. So it'll sound like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four one and two and three and four. And that takes us into verse number one. Now verse number one doesn't actually have any lead guitar on top of it. So when we get into verse number two, that's when the lead guitar kicks back in. Now there's some really interesting chord theory stuff here, which is really, really handy to know. 
Now I'll teach you how to play it first and then I'll be talking about the theory behind it afterwards. And I would highly recommend that you listen to that portion because there's a lot to be learnt from it. So first off we're playing over an F sharp minor chord. So the shape looks like this. So we have 11th fret of the third, 10th fret of the second and 9th fret of the first string. Now we're gonna be plucking the third, second and then first and second strings. So four note picking pattern there. And you play that with a down, down, up, up. And you repeat that through twice. For the second bar, we're going to just bar our index finger across the ninth fret of the third, second, and first strings and play the exact same picking pattern. The third bar and the fourth bar are identical to the first and second bars, so we just do that. F sharp minor and C sharp minor again. For the second line of tab, the first two bars are identical to the first two bars of the first line of tab. And then for the third bar of the second line of tab, we're going to play an A triad like this. So ring finger on the 10th fret of the second string and then index and middle finger on the ninth frets of the third and first strings. We're gonna play two picking patterns here. And then a B7 triad. So middle and ring finger on the 11th frets of the third and first string and your index finger goes on to the 10th fret of the second string. And we've played two picking patterns here. So the third and fourth bar. And then for the third line of tab, we're just barring our index finger across the ninth fret again. We're playing three picking patterns here and then ending with the third string and second string held out for one beat each. So, one, two, and three, and four, and four, and four. So in total, verse number two. Okay, so what's going on here theory-wise? There's a lot to learn here from the brilliant songwriting of the Beatles. So this first shape is a minor triad. Now that's being played on top of a regular minor bar chord. So how do we think about this shape? So think about a fifth string minor bar chord. This is an F sharp and this is a minor bar chord shape on the fifth string. We're just playing the top three notes there. And the way you can locate this quite easily is by just using your ring finger to locate the root note. So that's an F sharp note and therefore that's an F sharp minor triad. So if you wanted to find a B minor triad, find the B note on this third string right there, apply the shape and there's a B minor. Okay, so for the C sharp minor, so yes, you'd be right in saying, okay, well, let's find a C sharp note and we can play that on top of the C sharp minor chord that the rhythm's playing. But what George actually does here is he plays a different inversion of the minor triad. So it just means that the minor chord notes are in a different order. And as a result, it's a different shape. So you're playing the ninth frets of the third, second and first strings. How do we think about this? Well, it's based off a sixth string minor bar chord. Okay, so that's a C sharp and this is a minor bar chord. So that's a C sharp minor. And we're just playing the top three strings from that. And the way we can locate this is using the first string. So that's a C sharp, that's a C sharp minor triad. So if you wanted to find an A minor triad, find an A on the first string, there's one there, bar your finger across it, and that's an A minor chord. When we go to this shape that's played on top of the A chord, this is an A major triad. How do we think about that? Well, it's the same shape as a D major chord, except we just shift it all the way up here. How do we locate that? Well, our root note is the pointy end of this D shape or where our ring finger is. If that's a D, this is a D major triad. So we just need to find an A, which is there, and that is an A major chord. 
And then for our B7 chord, how do we think about this chord? Well, it's the same shape as a D7 chord. So D7 open chord looks like this. How do we locate it? Well, the root note is actually two frets up from where our index finger is. So that's D7, index finger, and there's the D. So find a B note on the second string, and then go down two frets, and that's where your index finger will lie for this B7 chord. Now what about the final line of tap? The rhythm guitar is actually playing an E major chord. So why are we playing a C sharp minor triad here? Well, actually, in the context of the E major, this shape is actually an E6. So it's almost the same as an E major triad, but we're adding a sixth note there. So this is an E6 on top of an E major chord. But if you played this same triad on top of a C sharp minor chord, it would be a C sharp minor and not an E6. I don't want to confuse you too much, but there's some awesome chord theory there, and that's really helpful if you want to do jam along, play some lead guitar on top of a regular chord, then you can do so using those shapes. So let's say I'm playing a G major chord. You could find a G major triad by locating the G note on the second string and playing those notes on top of the G. Some very clever songwriting here from the Beatles. Okay, so next we get to the bridge slash verse two. Now the bridge section is this first line of tab and it's basically just the same chords that the rhythm is playing, except we're just strumming each chord once and holding them out. So we start with C sharp minor, then B, C sharp minor, G sharp minor, C sharp minor, G sharp minor, and then B, and B again, and then at the end of this bar, we play that same intro riff. And that final lead lick will take us into verse number three. Now that first bar of verse number three is just that fourth fret of the fifth string. And then we jump back into our lead parts on that second bar for the C sharp minor. All right, next let's learn the guitar solo, which is a lot of fun. And it's just highlighting the vocal melody. So we start on the 5th fret of the 4th string with our ring finger. Now this is on the end beat after the 2. And then we go to the 2nd fret of the 3rd string, up to the 3rd fret. So there's 3 notes. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. On the end beat after 4 we go to the 5th fret of the 2nd string. Hold that out for a beat. So on the next bar, on the end beat after 1, we hit the 3rd fret. We hold that out for a bit and then slide it up to the 6th fret and then pluck that again on the 3rd beat. So from the 5th fret and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and in this first phrase 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and... For this next phrase the first 4 notes are the same except we're playing it with different timing. So we're playing at quarter notes here and we're starting on the two beat. So one and two and three and four and one and... After that, we're gonna hit that fifth fret again and quickly slide down to the third fret. So this phrase, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and... Now the second line of tab starts off in a similar way that the first line of tab did. So it's the same phrase and the same notes but the first note is the only thing that differs here. It starts on the two beat and not the end beat after the two, but everything else is the same. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and... Then for our next phrase, we just hit the sixth fret of the second string, seventh fret of the third string, and then eighth fret of the fourth string. So one and two and three and four then we go down to the 7th fret of the 4th string, hit it again, and slide down to 5th. So 1, 2, and 3, and 4, and 1, and 2, and 3. On the end beat after the 3, we then go to the 3rd fret of the 5th string. So the C, we hit this, and then on the end beat after the 4, we hit it again, and then the open 4th string, and then the 2nd fret of the 3rd string. So that will sound like this. And then for our final lick, it's the 3rd fret of the 5th string, open 5th string, then 3rd fret of the 6th, 
and first fret and we hit that again and slide it up to the third fret and that takes us into verse number four so the final lick and in total for the solo one and two So that final note that slides into the third fret takes us into verse number four. Now verse number four is identical to verse number two and number three, except we are playing everything up one fret. So there's a key change that happens during the solo, which means everything gets shifted up one fret. So there's nothing really new to learn for the first two lines of tab. That's the same as all the other verses, just shifted up one fret. For the third line of tab, we play this shape for three picking patterns. And then we end with one more third string pluck. And then we play the intro riff, but the intro riff is shifted up one fret. So like that. So the final line of tab. We repeat that again. And then the third time we do it, we're sliding into the fifth fret. And then the fourth time we do it, instead of going to the fifth fret of the fifth string, we hit the open fourth string, so. So that's it for verse number four slash the outro, which sounds like this from the start, starting with the end of the solo. And those are all the lead guitar parts. So now I'll be doing two playthroughs of the song. The first playthrough will focus on the rhythm guitar and the second playthrough will focus on the lead guitar parts. I'll also have a vocal track on top for some context. Big thanks to my friend Eric for lending his awesome vocals to these playthroughs. Feel free to play these back as many times as you'd like to, to practice playing along to and see how you go.
Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this lesson, then I know you'll absolutely love these other lessons too. So hit the link here, or if you want to grab a copy of my free guitar ebook, then head over to guitarzerodihero.com or click the link here. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.